Since the Great Recession, central banks have received more and more attention, with many believing they have quote-unquote superpowers that enable them to run the show as they see fit, generating inflation during times of deflation, and squashing inflation once it becomes problematic. This view is, however, not all that accurate, especially when it comes to fighting deflation. We have some compelling empirical validation of this, for example the fact that despite trying quite hard, major central banks such as the Federal Reserve and European Central Bank have not managed to generate consumer price inflation. We got asset price inflation, if you will, several asset bubbles even, or broadly speaking, anything you can imagine other than the desired consumer price inflation. Why? Simply because it takes more than one to tango due to legislative limitations. For example, the Federal Reserve cannot spend, it can only lend, and as such, 1. If things don't change legislatively speaking, commercial banks are much more important in the inflation equation than central banks, with it doing little good if the Federal Reserve quote-unquote prints bank reserves that remain unused because commercial banks are too afraid to lend aggressively. And 2. The same way, consumer and business behavior is also far more important, with arguably the most effective tool in the arsenal of central banks currently being so-called jawboning, or plain and simple, talking so as to convince the public that inflation is coming and get them to spend more, thereby hoping to obtain precisely that much desired inflation. The bottom line is that at this point in time, central banks don't have many of the superpowers many give them credit for, but they can very convincingly pretend they do. This, however, can change, so watch out for proverbial paradigm shifts on the legislative front, such as a potential modification of the Federal Reserve Act.